So a few days ago, I was on the market searching for a new pair of boots to upgrade my Archmage Ball Lightning build. I needed Dexterity, Maximum Mana, Maximum Life, Chaos Resistance, Elemental Resistance, and of course movement speed for the perfect pair of boots and ideally have each modifier to be at least tier 3 or higher. Not surprisingly, such a pair of boots is extremely rare on the market. I was only able to find one pair that fits all the requirements and the seller is asking for 12 divines for it. I briefly thought about crafting it myself with traditional crafting methods, but then it dawned on me. Why not give graveyard crafting a try to see if it's any good? Fast forward and let me show you the result, which I was extremely lucky to get with just one craft. It has tier 1 movement speed, tier 1 life, tier 2 mana, tier 1 fire and chaos resistance, and most importantly, an empty suffix that is extremely valuable for me to craft on any resistance and attribute that I might need. I will show you step by step in this video how I plan, set up, and craft my perfect item and hope you will have the same result too. The first step to graveyard crafting is to figure out what combination of corpses to use to maximize the chance of getting the modifiers you want. For that, you will need the Craft of Exile website. If this sounds daunting to you, I promise it is not because I will be holding your hands throughout the process. Once you are on Craft of Exile, the first thing you have to do is select the right equipment base that you would like to craft on. Using my boots as an example, under Choose Base Group, I would select Boots. Then there will be a few options for you to choose from. This will dictate if your craft will come with Evasion, Armor, Energy Shield or a combination of two options. Dex is for Evasion, Int for Energy Shield and strength or str for armor so go ahead and choose what is best for your build and i will choose int as i need energy shield for my build after that select graveyard for graveyard crafting what you want to do next is to eliminate all lower tier modifiers so they cannot be rolled on your craft to do that simply click on modifier tier rating to add them to the craft multiple times I suggest to start with 5 and increase as you see fit. For example, for the boots that I wanted to craft, I see that tier 4 mana can still be rolled with 5 modifier tier rating increase. But if I increase that to 6, now I can only roll tier 3 and above. After that, just go ahead and select all modifiers at the minimum tier you want for your craft. Even though you are selecting tier 2 or tier 3, that is just the minimum, and you will still have a good chance to roll at higher tiers. At this stage, I did run into one minor hiccup. Dexterity cannot actually roll on an intelligence base. So I have two options, either switch to a dexterity plus intelligence hybrid base, or leave a suffix slot open so I can bench craft dexterity afterwards. I choose to go with the second option. Once you have selected all the modifiers you want, the next step is to come to this section and assign a priority to each modifier. You can group modifiers in the same priority level like this to let the tool know that you are okay with rolling any one of the modifiers but not more than one of them. I grouped all elemental resistance in the same priority group for that reason. A lot of people will just click on the quick suggest or compute best selection next but try to resist the urge because if you do that, the tool will suggest a recipe that uses the full 88 graves which is not what we want. If you follow what I'm about to tell you and do the planning manually, you can get a very similar result with less than half of the corpses used. Next, you need to decide whether to fill all 6 modifiers or leave a slot open for the crafting bench later. Filling all 6 will increase your chances of hitting all the modifiers you want, but leaving one modifier open will give you more flexibility to change the last modifier based on what you need. I prefer to have an open slot 
so I will click the explicit modifier button once. If you want to fill all 6 slots, just click it twice. After that, take a look at the prefixes and suffixes table below to identify tags that you need to manipulate. Your goal is to maximize the probability of getting the modifiers you want using the number of tries below as your yardstick. For example, I notice there are many modifiers with the defenses tag that I do not want on my gear. So I will click on defenses in the modifiers are scarcer section until I hit a diminishing return. I also want to avoid any attribute modifiers so I will make them scarcer too. You don't need to be overly precise at this stage, we will fine tune them later. Next, under the increased chance of modifiers section, click on the tags associated with the modifiers you want. For my case, I will do it for life, mana, speed, resistances, and the elemental tags. Same as before, until I hit a diminishing return. Again, don't worry about being exact, just trust your judgement. If you notice the number of tries going up after increasing a certain tag, simply reduce it back down. As I want to leave a suffix slot open, I also need to increase the chance for prefix modifiers to roll as well. As you can see now, with only 30 corpses, we are able to get the chance of success up to 1 in 6 tries. It is possible to optimize this further by adjusting each tag in the pool up or down by 1 to see if it significantly affects the number of tries. As you can see, after doing that, we are able to use one less corpse and still get a higher probability of success of 1 in 5. Now that you have your recipe, it is time to gather the corpses that you need. First, check your stash and mark to see if you already have some of the corpses. You can track what you need versus what you have in a spreadsheet, or like me, I just itemize everything and arrange them in my stash. Then, simply buy the remaining corpses from the trade website. To maximize efficiency, don't worry too much about the level of the corpses when you are buying them. We will address that later with item level corpses. After gathering all the corpses, we can finally begin the crafting process by burying them at the graveyard. When placing the corpses, it is very important to ensure that they are all connected to each other. This is easy to do, but requires attention to avoid accidentally skipping a grave. After placing all corpses, click on any craft button to open the crafting menu and then select the equipment base that you want. When selecting a base, you need to first make sure you have enough attributes in your build to use the item. In my case, the sorcerer boots provide the highest amount of energy shield, so I will choose that. This is where you can check the item level of the craft and compare it to the item level needed for all tier 1 modifiers to roll on your item. Going back to Craft of Exile, I can see that the highest item level required is 86 to roll tier 1 movement speed. So that's the item level that I will need to aim for. My craft is at item level 78 at the moment, so I will need 8 item level increased corpses to bring it up to 86. I ended up only needing 7 as some of the item level corpses that I used are of higher level, so that brought up the average level of all corpses which dictates the item level of the craft. Once the item level is high enough, do one final check on all the modifiers to make sure that they match the recipe on Craft of Exile. Now, all that's left to do is pray, rub a bald man's head, or touch a rabbit's foot for luck. So, this is how I crafted the perfect item for my build. Comment down below if you have any questions, tips and tricks that I missed, or even share your own Necropolis crafting success story. 
if this video helped you in any way, a like and subscribe would mean the world to me. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.